All right, we're going to use the graph of this given function f of x here to create a sketch for f prime. So I'm just going to set up my axes here. So I've set up my horizontal axis to look just like the horizontal axis above. And if we're going to draw a sketch of f prime, we need to know first that that f prime means the derivative of f and that the derivative of a function is the slope of a function. So let's just work from left to right on this original function and always ask the question, what is the slope of this original function? So let's start right here between 1982 and 1983. What is the slope of this function? Well, it looks like the y value changes from five to seven and the x value changes from 1982 to 1983. That's a rise of two units and a run of one unit. So our slope is two. What that means for our derivative is that the actual function value or y value on our derivative is going to be 2 between 1982 and 1983. That means our derivative is just going to look like this. Now right here at 1983 our derivative changes so I'm just going to put an open circle here and now let's ask the question what is the slope of the segment of our original function between 1983 and 1984? Well it looks to me like our slope of this piece is negative 2. Because our slope here is negative 2, that means that the graph of our derivative between 1983 and 1984 is just going to be negative 2. Let's go to our next segment. Let's ask the question, what is the slope right here? Again, it looks like our y values are rising from 5 to 7 and running just one unit. So our slope again here is 2. So the value of our derivative between 1984 and 1985 is going to be two again. We can then move on to the next segment between 1985 and 86. The graph of our original function has a slope of zero. That means down here in our derivative graph, the value of our derivative is going to be zero. Now looking at our final segment from 86 to 87, again, it looks like our graph has a slope of two. Therefore, the value of the derivative is going to be two. Okay, that's pretty much it for that problem. The only other point that I want to make is that the derivative of this function does not exist at any of the corners of the original function. Right at the x value 1983, for example, the function is not rising in 1983 and it's not falling in 1983. The slope of the function is just changing. So the slope of the function itself does not exist. Therefore, we have these open circles at all of the corners on our derivative. We could probably make an argument that we could put a closed circle here and a closed circle here. But okay, I think that's all I have for you for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.